Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Thank you for joining us on the program. Larry Auerbach is an historical fiction writer who brings the Old West alive with great adventure reads. He's a practicing psychotherapist of 23 years in Port St. Lucie, Florida, where he lives with his wife of 32 years. He earned his master's in social work from Barry University in Miami Shores, Florida, in 1991 and has maintained a busy practice ever since. He's traveled out west for numerous pack trips, reenactment rides, and his interests include chess and horseback riding. He's a collector of frontier memorabilia and maintains an extensive library of the people, places, and events of the American Wild West. He's a member of the Western Writers of America. Larry's been with us on the program to talk about his previous novels, In Common Common Threads and The Spirit of Red Mountain, Back with us on the program today to talk about his latest, A Matter of Honor. Larry, welcome back to the program. It is always great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. It's very nice to be invited. It was great having a chance to read the new book, A Matter of Honor. And this is, I understand, this is what the first book in a series. There will be a sequel coming out fairly shortly with this. So this is the the first of a sequel. I'm hoping it's it's going to be the first half of a two-part thing. And hopefully I can find another story for the characters of to uh, show up in. We really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed having a chance to read this, and it's the story of Jonah Berryman. Talk a little bit about him, and this goes back to, to, to Civil War days. Set it up for us. Yeah. Okay, Jonah was a marksman or a sharpshooter or sniper, depending on what term you want, for uh, the Union Army. And on his last assignment, he was supposed to take out some rebel soldiers but when one turned the officer he was aiming at turned around, it turned out to be his cousin. So he kind of he hesitated, and somebody behind him shot instead. When Jonah turned around to see who was shooting, one of the rebel officers shot him, and that was the end of the war for him. He ended up in the hospital with some major problems, head injuries, and a mysterious doctor fixed him up. Now, Jonah has a, a score or something to settle with the doctor, something to give him for what he's for what he did. And he's been looking for him ever since the war. This action takes place in around seventy six in uh, seventy seven and he's looking for the doctor. He's trying to find him. He's had leads and they all didn't none of them ever panned out. But now he's been sent to a place called Willow Springs where he's told the doctor is living and he's looking for him. And he gets all and sorts of there, yeah, he gets all sorts of surprises when he's there. He finds himself like what, quite in the middle of a of a mystery. He's got people shooting at him. Yeah, always he's, he's got people shooting at him, and he doesn't know why because he doesn't know who they are. But after a couple of incidents, he starts to discover that these are all people who are leading double lives, some of which he's been looking for in the past and had dropped out of sight, and some he's never heard of before. But they all seem to have something in common, and that is they're all targeting him. The book is called a, yeah, a, a Matter of Honor. Larry Auerbach is our guest on the program, the author of the book. Information is available. The book, of course, is available at, at all the usual places like Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, Larry's website is Larry P. Auerbach. That's A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H dot com. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. As always with your books, the characters really come alive. In setting up uh, John O'Berryman and, and exactly who he is, in the beginning, you're talking about, and he was a, a sniper, a sharpshooter, and he really never gave a whole lot of thought to who it was he was killing, and then he's confronted with, with his cousin, and he makes a split-second decision, but it, it was too late to save his, his cousin, and not only just a cousin, his favorite cousin, from being killed. That is correct. And it was, came as a big shock and to see his cousin go down. And it's a big shock to his cousin going around, and it kind of threw him off his game. That's what made him hesitate. And now he's trying to do something with the doctor who treated him, and things seem to keep happening to him. I tried to put a lot of thought into the character and get somebody who was believable. And you could understand his position. Well, yeah, you can. And this was, and to further set the stage to make sure that I was clear with this, these, this is during the Civil War. Uh, Jonah and Jonah and... Well, actually, the, action takes place, the action takes place post-Civil War. Right. And the, the shot with his, with his cousin was, was before that. 
and he's right, out about a week before mathematics. Yeah, and this is, uh, and in setting it up, you're talking about, well, there are two things to talk about. Him and his cousin are on opposite sides, and a lot of families were torn, of course, by the war, and he was really beaten down by the war at that point, wasn't he? Yes. It really took a toll on him. I mean, when you spend your life, your career, shooting people from a distance, there's a certain amount of detachment you have to develop in order to be able to, to do that. And that takes a toll because then it becomes very difficult to have any real relationships later on when you want to. You're always distant from people, always keeping them arm's length so you, they, so you don't expose any emotional vulnerabilities. You know, the one thing everybody appreciates in your books, and Larry Auerbach is our guest on the program talking about his new book called A Matter of Honor, is the accuracy that you, that you bring to your writing. It's nonstop action, it's drama, it's history, but it's accurate as well. Talk about the research you did in, in, in putting this book together and putting together A Matter of Honor, because I know accuracy is, is extremely important to you in, in putting a novel together. Well, as you mentioned, I have a, quite an extensive library of, act, of Civil War memorabilia and books about the people and the events of the place of the time. So I spent a lot of time learning about this person, and I draw on my own personal practice here to understand what, that, what drives somebody, the dynamics that go into the emotional responses to a given situation. So it, it's a combination of what I've learned about real people plus extending that into a character that I've made real for myself. What is it about the West that you feel so comfortable? I mentioned your your fascination going out there and taking trips, that type of thing. And I think we talked before about your first trip out there, you just felt at home there, almost like you'd been there before. I would have to say it feels almost like re on the long lines of reincarnation. I just felt like I was going home when I went out there. I was out in Idaho and it felt like just home. And when I've taken my trips to Montana or Utah or any of those places, it's like I'm seeing things again I've seen before. I just feel very, very at ease and very relaxed in the Western Western states. A matter of time period. A matter of honor is the new book written by Larry P. Auerbach, our guest on the program. His website is Larry P. Auerbach. A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H dot com. You can log on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You really do an excellent job in developing the characters. Talk about the process in in doing that. When you when you started the book, did you have the characters really well thought out, or was this a sort of a work in proce- progress as, as you were going through the, uh, in writing the book? Well, I think about who the character is. Was it, I give him a backstory, and then I just take a few days to think about how would he respond to this? What would his reaction be? And how would I respond? So I guess a lot of me is in each of those characters to some degree. The the villains are people I've known or had occasion to come in contact with, and I've known what their drives were, what their motivations were for the way they behaved, and I just incorporate that into the villains. And most people are just reacting to something based on experiences they've already had. It just re- re- triggers an emotional response, and they react like they did in the past. It's really not hard if you really take the time to develop and build a backstory for somebody first. That's really where it all comes from, having a good backstory. We can tell the passion in your voice as you're talking about the characters, the process of writing, as well as, as the actual works. And the new book we're talking about is called A, a Matter of Honor. How long did it take you in working on the book, from the concept to the point where you thought, okay, this this story's finished, I'm ready to have it uh, printed? I don't know, that's hard, because I start thinking about the story when I finished the last one. Oh, yes, yes. So it's been about a year and a half that I was thinking about it and working on it. And for me, I find that once I get going, the story tends to write itself. The characters tell me what to say. They, t- they tell me, they direct the action. If you have a good picture of who the person is, you know how they're going to respond. You know what they're going to, going to put up with, what they're not going to put up with, how they're going to react to a given situation. So many people and read... Just create this. Sorry. Yeah, so many people read the books and, and they, they can visualize. They're saying it's almost like we're, this is sort of a, a movie. It's not just a book. I can actually see what's happening. As you're writing, is that the way you approach that, that you can visually see exactly what's happening? 
Well, I, tr- I would look at it as what would I see on the screen. And right. I, I think about the actors we have today, and I pick someone that I think would play this character. And so I write it for his screen, his or her screen persona. Like, I mean, I, I've always admired Gregory Peck because of his calm nature and Jimmy Cagney because of his confidence. And so when I write a character, I think, who would, who would play this? And how would he carry himself? If you look at any Gregory Peck character, he was always calm. He never got excited. He was always together. He, was always, he knew what he was doing. Every move was completely thought out. And he never moved recklessly. Jimmy Cagney just exploded with confidence. No matter what movie he did, he was always confident. And that's what I want my characters to be. Whoever the actor is, that's how I want them to be. That's how I want to see them in my head. Who do you see Jonah Berryman as? Oh, I could see him as maybe Josh Brolin. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah. Now, that would be good. We'll try to get him a copy of the show and a copy of the book and see if we can get anything going with with, with the movie here. Who are some of your... You I'm sorry, you mentioned uh, com- Common Threads before. I always saw Michael Clark Duncan as uh, the lead character there. Oh, the yes. Died. Yes. That, uh, yeah, that's, when you mention these, it's like, yeah, I can actually see them in the, in the works that uh, that you've done. Our guest on the program is Larry Auerbach. His books are Common Threads, uh, The Spirit of Red Mountain, and the new book we're talking about specifically, A Matter of Honor. As you were growing up and, and you got interested in reading, encouraged to read by your dad, you had a teacher that actually encouraged you to write along the way as well, who were some of your influences? When you look back now, do you, you can you say, okay, these were oh. authors that I read that really sort of shaped who I am today? I'd say Earl Stanley Gardner was one, and one of my favorites of all time was probably Earl, uh, Conan Doyle, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes. I really loved his stories. There's so many people, like kids that grow up now, and it's sort of like, uh, I don't want to say they're not reading, but probably not as much, at least taking books home and going through those. Talk about what that was like as a child growing up for you and having the opportunity to read books and what it did in, in stimulating your imagination. Well, my, my parents didn't buy a lot of toys for us, but I could get books whenever I wanted. So I'm probably a bookaholic. I love books. I, I surround myself with books. I can't see myself ever getting a Kindle because I want the feel of touching a page. And reading has been one of the greatest ways of expanding your imagination, your vocabulary, and your awareness of what's going on. It's a magic carpet to places you'll never get to and to times you'll never be able to see. So reading is essential to development, I believe. Yeah, in so many ways. Uh, you're listening to This Week in America. Our website is thisweekinamerica.us. Our guest on the program back with us is Larry Auerbach, who's written some excellent historical fictions, including Common Threads, The Spirit of Red Mountain, his new one called A Matter of Honor, and he's working on a sequel. The title for that is what, A Matter of Justice? Did I see that correctly? A Matter of Justice. That is correct, A Matter of Justice. That's going to pick up where A Matter of Honor ends and explain everything that's been going on and what, who's behind it all. This will be good because as it's there, it's like okay, you're thinking, okay, what exactly is going into it? As we mentioned, Jonah walks into a situation where he thinks he's going to be able to finally say thank you to the doctor that saved his life. And all of a sudden he realized he's been set up. He's being manipulated by a number of different people. And I won't say any more. You can find out for yourself in, uh, in a matter of honor. Did I, did I say he was trying to tell the doctor thank you? Uh, no, no. Actually, oh, I'm... Okay. I'm yeah, I'm sort of thinking that that's uh, that's why he was he, he was looking for the doctor, but he he's looking for the doctor, the doctor who saved his life after yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. Give the doctor. Yeah, so you can follow it all in in the book, A Matter of Honor, and the website is very simple, LarryPAuerbach dot com, A U E R B A C H dot com, and you can click on directly by going to our website, This Week in America dot us. Uh, you grew up in a small town. I understand that sort of influenced some of your some of your writing as well. How did how did that all take place? Yeah, because, small, because small towns have secrets and stories, and you know town characters, and those are always valuable to any story. You have to have a, a town character somewhere because they usually they have a reason for being a town character, and they have things that happen to them to turn them into the character. And you know they say the, the thing is. 
Yeah, but for the grace of God, go I. So, you know, many of these characters that people make fun of might have turned out very differently had something gone a different way once. I like to give them a chance to come back from where they were. Yeah, and I mentioned before how people really enjoy how you develop characters. Is that something that's sort of an ongoing process with, with you is, is you see people in real life, and you're probably a people watcher, where you're sort of making mental notes of, of things that, that possibly you can oh, weave into characters? Absolutely. Anybody who's different or unusual has a quirk or a special talent, I always store that. Because I think if you don't care about the characters, you don't, you don't care about the story. Even if you don't like the character, you still have to care about what happens to them. You have to want to see them get their come up and something. You have to be involved with the character to some degree, whether positive or negative, in order for the story to work. How difficult yeah, is it for you yet yeah, to walk away? Now, now, you're not because you're doing a sequel to A Matter of Honor. But as you finish other books and characters, are you eliminate. You're either done with them or... You take care of them during the course of the uh, the book that you're writing. How is it to to leave characters like, okay, this is over with and I'm moving on now? I would think that would be difficult to do. It is, and I don't do it. I never assume I'm done with a character unless they're actually killed off. I always think, you know, maybe I'll bring them back somehow. Maybe I'll have them run into one of the other characters in the same time period. Maybe they'll connect up somehow. I always leave that door open. That's interesting. So the characters you read about in A Matter of Honor, uh, in fact, in, in Common Threads and the Spirit of Red Mountain, you, be, you may see again someday. And the, the new book is uh, is called A Matter of Honor. A Matter of Justice will be out at some point. We'll stay in touch with Larry and have him on to talk about that. It, it's all available. Uh, of course, you can go to any of the uh, online bookstores. Or go to Larry's website, LarryPAuerbach.com. A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H dot com. And you can link on directly to Larry's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Larry, I loved having a chance to read the book. Love having a chance as well talking about it. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Keep in touch. And when you finish A Matter of Justice, sure we'll, we'll talk about that as well. I appreciate it. Looking forward to it, Rick. Thank you, sir. Stay, Take care. Stay warm. You do the same. He's in Florida and we're not. So that <laughs> yeah. we'll try to stay as warm as we can here during the uh, during the, the winter. Information on Larry, of course, available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us.